Welcome to Popcast, a crowd-sponsored yo-yo show. My name is Dr. M. Popular. Huge shout out to John Anderson and Taka from Spin Gear and the rest of my sponsors over on Patreon.com who proudly sponsor the show and make it possible. I want to tell you a story. So it's 2000. I was running a yo-yo store in St. Louis called Yo Mama's Yo-Yo Store, and it didn't go that great. I, I thought there was going to be a massive, massive, uh, after the boom, I thought there would still be like some sales, right? Like if I could just do like a third of what we did during the boom, uh, I'd be able to pay rent. And we did, we did not do so well. After a boom, you, you couldn't give away a yo-yo. I did still sell some. I mean, like I'm talking about like, like a yo-yo a day kind of thing. And I was in the mall living, living this life, uh, you know, working nine to nine at the mall on Sundays. You got to, you got to come in an hour later and you got to leave at five. So 10 to five, it was, it was almost like my day off. It was the day I could do chores, but I'm in the mall kind of going through this. And this, this kid comes by with a little disposable plastic bag and uh, he has this look on his face, this sheepish look. And I see his mom kind of like, go on, go, go, go over there. And she's sending this, this kid to me, to my stop, to my yo mama's yo-yo store. And I, I think I recognize this kid. And he came by and I was like, okay, it's, it's gonna be a refund time or something, right? Or like some sort of explanation. Some people, they have a hard time. They can't, can't do the sleeper and you know, they just want a refund or whatever. So this kid kind of sheepishly kind of walks up with this bag and he's like, I, I need to make a return. And he looks at his mom and she kind of nudges, you know, from a distance. And I'm like, okay, all right, yeah, let's, what's, what's going on? What can I, what can I do for you? And he's like, well, this, this yo-yo I bought from you, it melts too easily. It melts too easily. It melts too easily. The yo-yo melts too easily. This yo-yo, the yo-yo in this bag melts too easily. Give me my money back. Okay, so, you know, I try to contain my face and, you know, go, mouth's too easy. Okay, all right, let's, let's take a look, buddy. And he reaches in and he pulls out this Turbo Bumblebee GT. This Turbo Bumblebee GT. Like, these things aren't butter there we call them the butter bees but i mean like that's a this is plastic this thing's melted a lamp fell on it sat on it long enough that it just burned its way in and just completely completely burned it literally like yang yang like this the yellow half and the black half they're they're now one piece in here this is this is this is some serious melting like it is fortunate that the house didn't catch on fire but not really my problem. Like the yo-yo didn't start a fire. The yo-yo is not really the issue here. His mom made him walk up by himself and ask for a refund on this melted yo-yo. And I looked at him and I was like, homie, I'm not giving you your money. Like there's not a return that's going to happen here. Right. And even with like a money losing business at this point, I'm still like customer facing, but like, this is not, I am not going to give you your money back because you set a yo-yo on fire. But that yo-yo is pretty cool. So I'll give you half of what you paid for it. So I bought the yo-yo back from him. <laughs> Broke ass me. Spent like $15, you know, in 2000. This was like a $30, $35 yo-yo. I bought the yo-yo back from him and I just kept it. It's kind of a, a memory that sometimes it's more important to, you know, listen to people and hear their concern. No, I'm kidding. I, I kept it because it's the stupidest thing I've ever heard of. Like, this kid wanted his money back for this. Oh, we don't play that. I had, I had to buy it. It's, it's a piece of modern art. I've, I've hung on to it for like 20 years. Don't try to get your money back if you set a yo-yo on fire. Maybe that's why I only sell aluminum yo-yos now. That's not true. I've got some plastic yo-yos. But if you buy a bolt from me and you set it on fire, I don't care. Like, I'm, I hope you're safe. But I'm not, I'm not giving your money back for that. 
So I guess that story got me a little nostalgic for the 2000s, but also maybe for plastic yo-yos. And speaking of plastic yo-yos, uh, I do have some new yo-yos coming out. These are responsive yo-yos that I made with Toy Bania. This is the Toy Bania thing, the Doc Pop edition. The Doc Pop edition is pretty baller because it's got the Doc Pop logo on it. No, these are titanium hubs. <laughs> these are titanium hub uh, things. And these are wonderful, responsive uh, yo-yos. I like to put counterweights on them. This is a gummy bear by my friend Nick. A uh, really great counterweight. But yeah, these are coming to the shop soon. Coming to Dr. Popular soon and Toy Bonnie site soon. And uh, also I decided for this video, I was gonna talk about The Matrix, which is a, a movie starring Keanu Reeves from like 99, 2000, I can't remember. But uh, a trick as well. Uh, the Matrix is one of my older tricks, and I think it's a really good example of talking about flow. So I'm going to teach you The Matrix, but also we're going to talk about flow. We're going to use The Matrix as a way to talk about flow. So let's start just with The Matrix. <laughs> This doesn't have to be done on a responsive yo-yo. It's not like a trick that like, oh, you have to be able to do it on a fixed axle or whatever. I'm just using one of these to kind of give you an example that this trick doesn't, doesn't need much. This is a really simple trick. This trick is fundamentally a double or nothing repeater with hella flow. And that's what we're gonna talk about. Now, I have talked about this in the Skin the Gerbil video, but I like to think of things in terms of like alpha and beta moves. When I'm thinking about moves, I think about moves that can be linked together without any pause and moves that have to pause, moves that literally have to reverse direction, right? The former are alpha moves and the beginning of Skin the Gerbil is a really good example of an alpha move. Until you get to that point. When you get to that point, you have to change the direction. So the first moments are trapeze, lindy loop, double on, right? Those are like three moves. And those three moves can be alpha moves that tie together. But once you get into that double on, unless you want to do another double on, the next step of the trick is to change the direction. And that's the beta move, right? So the beta is going to be like a pop motion, usually. It doesn't have to be. But when I yo-yo, you'll see I try to make things as smooth as possible and as poppy as possible. That's kind of my goal. The alpha and the beta, the yin and the yin and the yang. So with the matrix, what we're talking about is a double or nothing, a drop your finger, uncurl, pull over, swing to the right and dismount, and land back at a double or nothing. Now, of course, that's the elements of the trick. Again, double or nothing, drop, unwind, pull over, swing, double or nothing. But when you put them together into alpha, you know, into the matrix, right? It looks like this. So we're gonna talk about those motions. And uh, <laughs> I wanna say the reason I called this trick the matrix, Obviously, I'm like a sci-fi nerd, and The Matrix was the biggest thing at the time this trick was created. But also, this trick really kind of reminds me of like controlling time and kind of like, whoa. It always kind of specifically reminded me of like the leaning back and dodging bullets. Like when you do The Matrix right, when you kind of practice the style and the flow, it really looks like you're just like time is stopped for you. Everyone else sees something moving really fast, but for you, it's just kind of like, well, I'm going to take this bullet and just kind of move it and let me duck, right? So, so that's what we're going for, dodging bullets, bullet time. Should have called the trick bullet time. Let's get into the tutorial. First move is throwing a breakaway into a double or nothing. Really simple so far. Next move is going to be dropping the pointer finger on your throw hand. So now you're just kind of hanging. The double or nothing is just falling. And then you're just gonna swing the yo-yo and catch it in a trapeze. I mean, not even catch it, just swing it from here into here. And one note when you do that, you can kind of swing, but you can also kind of use a little bit of a pulling motion, right? We're talking about the style. That's gonna be a little stylish thing you can do is drop, swing, and just kind of pull. Now, after you do this unwind, 
you just put your hand in front and pull down and unwind again. This is called a pullover. So it just kind of looks like this. But again, I'm taking my throw hand, I'm going over my free hand, kind of going in front and pulling. So the yo-yo is going to kind of travel between, <laughs> between this hoop here. Pull. It's really not a hard move, but um, it's going to look really stylish when we put it all together. So double or nothing, drop, unwind, pull. And then the final thing you're going to do right after that pull is swing the yo-yo to the, to the side. For me, it's to the right. Go over your pointer finger and catch back around. Uh, and that was extremely not stylish. Let's try to do that at least a little stylish. So like we're going to go swing, catch. Quick note, I always keep the string uh, tucked behind my pinky finger. Uh, the reason I like to do that is to make room for everything. And just a quick note here that that just kind of makes it a little easier. Uh, you know, if you, if you do have a hard time hitting double or nothing, uh, you can always just kind of keep that string back there. It's, it's more useful for like big hoops that you might need, uh, whips and things. But even on tricks like double or nothing, just keeping that pinky there is going to make that easier to do. So we swung, caught, and double or nothing. Now I want to just go over those moves one more time and then we're going to talk about how to link them together. Double or nothing, drop, unwind, pull over, swing, catch it a double or nothing. Now let's see how we can do that. What we're going to do is combine those elements. We're going to think about what elements could be combined. And from the start, we're going to have to go to a double or nothing. As soon as you catch that double or nothing, you can drop. So you can kind of, kind of get an alpha start there. Like you're just, uh, it's still going to be kind of a, a thunky move or whatever, but like, you're just going to try to catch it as soon as you can. So right there, we've kind of taken out a move and right as you drop, you're going to start that next move. So you're going to go We're really trying to put these moves together. So even though this is pretty simple, practice that. Double or nothing. You're going to drop this as soon as you catch that double or nothing. And then you're going to unwind. And, you know, I know I'm talking about combining moves here. This actually does have a bit of a beta flow just because uh, if you think about it as the end of that double or nothing, that hit, that drop, is sort of the direction change. And I am doing a stylish thing where I, you know, drop that as soon as it does, but we are talking about kind of a direction change, kind of swings this way, and then everything else is going to swing the opposite way, right? So your, your beta move is really that drop, and then everything all the way around, the double or nothing and everything, all of that stuff is alpha moves. So drop, do your pullover. Let's practice that again. Drop, pullover. And what's cool about that pull, that last pull that we do, this one, is the yo-yo wants to swing to your side. If you're, if you're kind of reckless with it, it just kind of wants to do that anyway. So what we're going to do is we're going to allow that to happen. And we do have technically another direction change. We go to the right and then we kind of swing it back. That's such a smooth thing, right? But I am going to say, yes, that is, that is a direction change. But we're really kind of thinking about this moment where you catch it in a double or nothing and drop it. That's kind of the beta move. Because everything else from there is super smooth. I've seen some people do the pullover kind of like this. I think using this hand to go around versus this hand. And that works. I mean, really, all I'm trying to stress is whatever you do, you want it to have that flow. You don't want to have pauses. So even if you are doing this, you don't want to, you don't want to have that pause. You want to try to put it together as best you can. And for me, this pullover here, that's the best way to get that flow. 
And when you do that pullover, I think you're going to have this extra kind of nice looking move that's going to happen where the yo-yo and um, the yo-yo and your finger and your other hand, there almost appears to be a straight line, almost like you have a, a piece of metal going between and you're just kind of cranking it, right? You're, you're taking something that's very bendy, uh, you know, something that's very fluid. And for a second, you're kind of giving it this, um, <laughs> this straight line. It's just so stylish. Okay, and we talked about that swing out. This is another spot where you can really like add style to it. If you really kind of give it that flow and then pull it back, you can, you can kind of send it far out. I think this is really the moment when I was thinking about the matrix as like uh, <laughs> what this trick was representing. I think this is that moment where it kind of felt like I was laying back when I go to the side and then kind of bring it back. So uh, rather than just kind of here, Right, you see how everything's kind of like in this little zone. Rather than kind of sticking in the zone, swing the yo-yo out. When you do that pull, bring your hands together. Really get that string distance. So my hands are moving a whole bunch between, just kind of like you would with an Eli hop. You kind of bring your hands together to give, uh, to give the string more distance up. Well, we're doing the same thing. We're bringing our hands together from this kick out. You know, I mentioned earlier that the skin, the gerbil and the matrix are very similar. I actually created those, I think the same week. Uh, I definitely recorded them for the first time at my trailer home in St. Louis or in O'Fallon, Illinois. I recorded them on the same night. So the, the Matrix and the Skin the Gerbil are more than just like two similar tricks. I think literally I was just thinking alpha moves, combining stuff, and I'm pretty sure the Matrix was first and then Skin the Gerbil came next. What time is it? Time for my favorite trick, y'all. Uh, skin the gerbil. Uh, skin the gerbil. Uh, skin the gerbil. Uh, skin the gerbil. Uh, Just a side note. A lot of people ask me about um, yo-yo smoothness and they ask, hey doc, how do you get your yo-yos to kind of move so smoothly? I think when they move their yo-yo to the right, it's fine. And then when they kind of move it back, it kind of hops and does weird stuff. I get asked that a lot. Um, it's not really style. Like I think a lot of my tricks do have like kind of practiced keeping things smooth. Um, but for this particular thing, in terms of the yo-yo moving across the string, this is something I look for in a yo-yo. Like I don't want a yo-yo that feels grabby. And it usually comes down to the bearing. Like for most of the time, anytime I feel a yo-yo and it feels grabby, it's because you're using a concave bearing, which are very popular. A lot of yo-yos ship with concave bearings. A flat bearing yo-yo is going to have an easier time handling layers of string. So when you are in a trapeze and you kind of go back and forth or, you know, when you're kind of here and you go back and forth, like with a responsive yo-yo, if it's flat, the string's going to have an easier time kind of like dispersing itself, where if it's concave, all the string is fighting to be in the center. So you want a smooth yo-yo, I would recommend a C bearing, like a flat C bearing. See if that helps. That's the end of the tutorial. Thanks for watching. Again, huge shout out to my sponsors over on patreon.com slash docpop. If you're interested, we do monthly yo-yo clubs, the yo-yo over internet protocol, which is a really fun virtual yo-yo club that you can join online. It's once a month, uh, exclusive for my Patreon sponsors. So patreon.com slash docpop, help sponsor the show. Thanks for watching. Whoa.